And now let's solve the problem in Java code. First, we need to declare our uh, uh, variables. Uh, int n. This n is for the dimension of the matrix. And then we need a two dimension array for the date in Java. This is how we declare a two dimension array. And now let's process the input. Uh, first, we need to read in the n. So declare a scanner. And then we read in number n. We use integer function parse int to do the conversion. So now we have the dimension of the um, array, and now we need to initialize this array. So a equals new int. Now we know the dimension as n, and now we have the array ready uh, to store the numbers, and then we need to read in the numbers. Zero, I minus n. We need a, a loop in a loop. So the outer loop is for the rows. So each loop in the outer loop is for row. The inner loop is for the number, the inner row. So each time you loop in this inner loop, you got a new number in the row. So here we use index to identify the element in the array, and then we read in the number. Okay, and now we have the date ready. Now we need to do the first step to find the smallest number. We can go through the whole table to compare uh, the numbers to find the smallest one, but an easier way is to check only the numbers as a corner. And remember, in our scenarios, we have four scenarios, and the, the, the smallest number is always at a corner. It's either the top left, or top right, or bottom right, or bottom left. So we can just uh, compare the numbers at the four corners to get the smallest one. And first, we need to declare variables to identify the location of the smallest number and then we need to check the numbers and this is a number at the top left compare it to the number at top right and And remember that in Java, the index of an array starts from zero. So the last element in the array is the size minus one, not the size. Don't just use the size. And if this is true, then we know the smallest number is at the left side. We set j equals zero, otherwise we know the number is at the right side, j equals n minus one, and then we compare two of them, then we need to compare the other two numbers, so now we know the smallest number is either at the left or right, 
depending on the value of g. And now we need to compare the top and the bottom. So still uh, a zero. Now we need to use j here and compare it to a a minus one and j here. So if this is true, we know the smallest number is at the top. Otherwise, it's at the bottom. So the variable i is to identify if the smallest number is at the top or bottom. Variable j is to identify whether the smallest number is at the left or right. So a combination of both of them can identify the location of the smallest number. So it's either the top left, top right, or bottom right, bottom left. And now we need to check each case here. So now we check whether i equals 0 and j equals 0 also. In this case, the smallest number is at the top left. And which is the easiest case. You can just print the numbers out as how you read them in. So here we need a loop as i and j are both used. So we use x and y here. So we need a uh, embedded loop. And in the loop, we need to print out the number. And to separate the numbers in a row, we need to print a space. And in the outer loop, as uh, each time you finish the loop in the inner loop, you have printed out a row of numbers. Now you need to print out the numbers for another row. So you need to print a new line. Yes, the print line with nothing as parameters. OK, so this is for when the smallest number is at the top left. And now we need to check other cases. If i equals 0 and g is bigger than 0, in this case, we know that the smallest number is at the top right. And uh, same thing, we need uh, two loops, and but as is in the top right. We need to make sure we are going the right direction. So here, when the smallest number is at the top right, we need to go downward first and then to the left. So the outer loop is to the left. The inner loop is to the bottom. OK, so for the outer loop, y equals n minus 1, y is not less than 0. We need to decrease y. And then for the inner loop, 
equal to zero, x less than n, increase x. And here we need to do the same thing. We need to print out the numbers and the space. And after and after the loop, we need to print out a new line. Okay, so this is to process the scenario when the smallest number is at the top right. And then we need to check if i is bigger than n and also j is bigger than n. So this is for the case that when the smallest number is at the bottom right. When the smallest number is at the bottom right, we need to go to the left side first and then upward. So the outer loop is going upward and the inner loop is going to the left side. Okay, so here we have the loop as x equal a minus 1. And if x is not less than 0, decrease x. And then for y equals a minus 1. If y is not less than 0, decrease y. And here, we also need to print the number and the space. And then after each time the inner loop is finished, we need to print out a new line. So OK, this is for the case when the smallest number is at the bottom right. And then we need to process the left scenario, which is when the smallest number is at the bottom left. And here we need a loop. When the smallest number is at the bottom left, we need to go upward first and then to the right side. So the outer loop is to the right side. And then the inner loop is go upward. So in this outer loop, we need to go to the right side. And then in the inner loop, we need to go upward. Decrease x. And so inside the loop, we do the same thing. We print the number, and we print a space. And then for the outer loop, we print a new line. So this is how we process the scenario when the smallest number is at the bottom left. So here we finish the code, and we can go through it again with our eyes to just to see if there are some errors. So we read in the number n. You can also use uh, next int here for this n. It's not a big difference. And here we have all the numbers read in. So the outer loop with i, the inner loop with j, read them in, and the declaration of the variables to identify the location of the smallest number and then we do the comparison of the numbers as the corners and 
looks okay. The process says top left. Okay. Top right. Looks okay. Bottom right. Looks okay. Bottom left. Also looks okay. So now let's test our program. So first run the program. Now we have the program running and we have sample input one from the problem. Now we test it. So first we give two and then one, three, two, nine. We got one, three, two, nine, which is exactly the output. So this one's okay. And now let's test the sample input two. So we give three, four, three, one, six, five, two, nine, seven, three. And we got one, two, three, three, five, seven, four, six, nine, which is correct. And now let's test uh, sample input three. And we have three, three, seven, nine, two, five, six, one, three, four. And as you can see, we got the same output as the output in the problem text. So with this test, we know that our program is running correctly. And this is the solve to uh, problem G4 uh, or S2. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, if you like it, please sum up. If you have any comments or questions, please leave your comment. And if you've not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I'll have more videos for these problems. I'll see you soon.